I'm not the only one who feels like this some mornings. When I wake up, I feel like I sound like a bowl of Rice Krispies. Snap, crackle, pop. When you get older, you are going to understand what I'm talking about. But when do you know if it's time to see a chiropractor and just how important is it to our overall health? To answer that and so much more, we wanna bring in Dr. Richard Levine with the Levine Clinic of Chiropractic. Thank you so much for being with us. Happy Monday to you. Happy Monday, Ronnie. Thank you so much for having me on. So I'm not the only one who uh, is snap, crackle, and pop in the mornings, right? <laughs> you know what? It's a very common thing. When it comes to when it comes to spinal health, we oftentimes have this idea that stiffness, tightness, maybe making a noise when we move means something. But what we do as chiropractors, we like to get beneath it. We want to figure out going right to the source, what's causing what's causing the discomfort in the spine, and why is it that we're getting those snap crackles, pops in the mornings? And I'm glad that you did uh, mention that because when it comes to being a chiropractor, what exactly do you do? We all know about medical doctors. Yeah, you know, so to answer that in you know, just kind of a simple form would be, we look at the positioning of the spine. We look at where are things, we look at whether it be orthopedic testing, neurological text, testing, x-rays, we look at where are things, where should they be, and as a result of that misalignment, what nerves, what discs are being impinged upon, that's res that's resulting in pain and discomfort in a body, in resulting in the body working at a less than best state. Because you know, for so many people, they don't think about going to see a chiropractor until maybe they are experiencing some of those issues, like, um, you know, your back goes out. Yeah. But should you include being a, going to the chiropractor as part of your overall general health? Well, you know what, to answer that, I always describe chiropractic. If I had to pick any field that I had to describe chiropractic in comparison to, it would be dentistry. You know, dentistry, if we waited till our teeth hurt to brush our teeth, brushing them wouldn't do anything. If we waited till we were in agony to see the dentist, yeah, the dentist would be able to get you some relief, but the problem is too late. It's not as simple as, you know, adding a fluoride toothpaste. It's not as simple as getting an electric toothbrush at that point. So just like you said, you know, oftentimes people don't care for their spine till it's too late. And our goal is to, with our current patients, get them doing spinal hygiene, you know, home spinal exercises every day to keep their spine well, and for letting them to know whether it be their kids, their coworkers, their friends, their loved ones, that they shouldn't be waiting until their spine hurts to pay attention to it. If you can address things now, especially in the youth that spend all their days doing this on the phone, if we can start addressing spinal issues now while people are younger before they're symptomatic, we can help them avoid the dangerous drugs, dangerous surgeries later on in life. That is such a good point because I think about the impact that, um, you know, just the change in lifestyle, what is going to be those long-term implications on our kids? Because kids, are, they're constantly looking down and sitting so much more now. You know, I think about myself. I got my first cell phone when I was in high school. I talk to patients now when we see a lot of kids in the office here. Um, you know, I see, I see a parent, you know, goes to lay down on the table, they give their two year old, their two year old, their cell phone, and they know exactly what they're doing on it. You know, kids from the time they're two to, you know, two, two, three years old, they're doing this all day. And if they're doing that all day, that means their head's in a forward position. Now you have the next step, adults, even kids are going to school from home, adults are working from home, where someone normally had a cubicle or a set desk space, now they're trying to do it from an iPad, you know, sitting on a bar stool in their kitchen. So, you know, posture, you know, the, the idea of forward head carriage, letting that head hang forward or forward head posture, that's becoming a, you know, epidemic in itself that I think, you know, if we don't start to take action now, working on seated postures, working on home exercises, we're gonna see some big trouble in the future for society. So with that, um because as soon as you started talking about that, I, I started to stand up straighter, right? <laughs> Do you get that a lot? <laughs> you know, people? it's funny. I'm in a networking group. We meet on Tuesday mornings, and uh, it's over Zoom. And it's funny. You know, everyone goes through and has their, you know, little one-minute presentation. As soon as I go, I can see all the cubes. Everybody does this. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're having a good impact on people. <laughs>
<laughs> so with that, can, can you give us some quick overall tips, especially for parents with their kids? Yeah, I mean, my, my recommendation would always be, I, I talk, with kids in the office, I always talk about treat your phone, treat your iPad like a bowl of soup. You don't, you don't bring your head to the soup, you bring the soup to you. And I always tell kids, instead of letting your head go down to the phone, bring your phone up to you. I know it feels a little bit, you know, abnormal, but you know, that's, that's one of the best ways to prevent that forward head position. Another thing I always recommend is if you're using a laptop, put a couple books, a box, you know, a riser, something underneath it. So that way the screen's more at eye level and your, your, key, your, key, your hands are up here on the keyboard as opposed to doing this. And then another thing I always talk about is if you're using an iPad, make sure you're not laying it flat. Because if you're laying it flat, the only way to look at it is to do this. So, you know, they make little risers, little things that you can angle an iPad on so that way you're not looking flat at the table. I'm thinking about um, this this morning because we are all guilty of this now. <laughs> and to try to change those habits, because if not, it could really lead to complications down the road. Yeah, you, you know what, my, my grandfather started our practice 60 years ago. Um, this is the Levine Clinic, this, this current year is our 60th anniversary. Oh, congratulations, and, 60 oh, years in you. business, that's a long time. You know, we're blessed, we're, we're very blessed. But the reason I'm bringing that up is, you know, in 60 years, we've seen a lot of different trends, whether it be for, you know, physical activities, computers, cell phones, whatever it might be. You know, the key is, is having a chiropractor see your spine until, you know, just like the teeth, until you have an x-ray, an image to actually tell us is the spine in the proper curvature, is the spine straightening out, has there been, become a tilt in the pelvis? Without knowing what's happening, there's really no way to treat it. And that's where we come in as chiropractors. We wanna look at where are things, and like I was saying earlier, where, where are the bones? Where should those bones be? And as a result of that misalignment, so many people have this idea that they're stuck in this position because of work postures, when truth be told, they're stuck in that position because of a spinal misalignment that's throwing off all of their biomechanics and where those joints should be naturally moving, they're locked, they're not able to move freely. So Dr. Levine, can I ask you, um, because I do know this, uh, the area around uh, chiropractors, uh, it's changing uh, as we go on. Is this often covered by insurance now? Yep, chiropractic, you know, we participate, or at least most chiropractors, but at least in our office here, um, we participate with all major health insurances, all auto insurances, um, we're Medicare and Medicaid providers. So realistically, just about any insurance policy we do, you know, it is covered, does cover chiropractic. So again, we're joined by Dr. Richard Levine here on the Splash Live. Any little last minute tips, especially going into the summer months? Do you see different types of injuries um, you know, as the summer, seasons change? Absolutely, summer months do, you know, in, in many people does bring out more physical activity. Um, our, our State Chiropractic Association in Michigan, something we talk about is not, especially for kids, is not being a one sport athlete. Someone who only plays baseball now does nothing. All you know, they play baseball in the summer. They do nothing fall, winter. Now comes spring. They start using their body again. It can throw things off. So our recommendation is to keep the body moving, keep the body active all year round. Uh, so going into the summer months, you know, my recommendation would be make sure you're not wearing slip, uh, flip flops too much. So often I see people walking around Costco in the mall, walking around the park wearing sandals. If you're going to the pool, wear sandals. If you need, you know, toothpaste at nine at nine o'clock at night and you're running to CVS, throw on a pair of sandals. But if you're going to be walking for more than ten minutes or so, make sure you're wearing a good supportive shoe. That's one of the things we talk about a lot in the office here is the importance of footwear as well as proper orthotics and footwear to support the spine. Uh, my recommendation would be if it's your first time going on the bike or going kayaking for the summer, don't go from zero to 100, you know, take some baby steps, let the body work um, work up to it. And then overall, make sure that we're jeopard, make sure we're taking advantage of the things that summer provides, making sure we're getting proper sunlight, getting vitamin D synthesis, making sure we're eating fresh foods. You know, in Michigan, we've got the luxury of, we have a lot of, you know, local farms, a lot of local produce. So making sure we're eating good fruits, making sure we're bringing in the right honeys, the right sweeteners into the body, avoiding sugars. You know, summer is one of the easiest times to be healthy because all you have to do is go outside 
outside for five minutes, you're getting fresh air, you're getting sunlight, getting a little bit of physical activity. And then as always, I have to give my plug, just like any time of year, make sure you're getting your adjustments, seeing your chiropractor to keep the spine healthy. So one last question for you, how often should someone go? Is this quarterly, twice a year? You know, it really all depends on the spine. Someone that's got a herniated disc with very active sciatica, we're gonna see that patient much more frequent, almost like a frequency you would expect with physical therapy. Um, someone that comes in for wellness, their spine's healthy, they wanna keep it healthy. You know, we would see them, some of our patients are on a monthly schedule, some of our patients are on a every three week schedule. It really just all depends on the patient. You know, someone, a truck driver that's sitting in a locked position all day, we're gonna probably see them a little bit more frequently than we see a seven-year-old. It really just all depends on the spine and the patient. But the key is, is you know, like you mentioned earlier, you know, proactivity, being proactive about, proactive about our spine keeps your spine a lot more healthy than waiting for symptoms. When you wait for symptoms, you inevitably get symptoms. Dr. Levine, thank you so much for your time and congratulations again on your uh, 60 years in business. That's amazing. Well, well, it's our pleasure. We appreciate the community letting us do what we do for 60 years. Thank you so much for having me and have a good, healthy day.